Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel and today the topic which I am going to discuss with you all is atmospheric pressure and it's a very simple topic students. So here what is atmospheric pressure? It is a pressure which is exerted by the atmosphere on the earth's surface. Now how does the atmosphere exert the pressure? That's the billion dollar question. So here in this image if you see now the earth's surface above the earth's surface we all know there are the different layers of air or the different layers of atmosphere is present now the atmosphere is also uh, like you know uh, different amount or the different uh, kinds of things are present in the atmosphere like uh, gases water vapor dust particles and pollutants now all those constituents which are present in the air is a form of a matter and then so matter means it is definitely having a mass mass refers to the weight isn't it weight of that uh, object whichever is there whichever or whatever is present now if it has a weight then definitely it is going to have its own force also so ultimately it's the force which is exerted by this different matters which are present in the atmosphere on the earth's surface at a at, at any given place and time okay the weight of the column of air at uh, any given place or time is considered as atmospheric pressure isn't it very simple now atmospheric pressure is measured by an instrument called barometer and that instrument shows us the weight of column of that air at the sea level is 76 centimeter so meteorologists have um, Meteorologists use a unit, okay, millibar, in order to measure the atmospheric pressure. Now, one millibar is equals to or uh, referred as one gram per centimeter square. So, it makes the seventy-six centimeter equals to thousand thirteen point two five millibar at the sea level. Now, that we consider as a normal pressure level. Now, if it goes above than this, it is a high pressure. And if it goes below than this, then it is a low pressure. Okay. So, in the previous uh, video, if you remember, there was a term isotherm. Isn't it? Now, isotherm was the, uh, you know, an imaginary line which joins the places having the equal temperature on the Earth's surface. Similarly, there is a line, an imaginary line, okay, which shows or which uh, joins the places having the equal amount of pressure on the Earth's surface. So that we term as isobar, okay. Iso means equal, bar means pressure. So what is the importance of atmospheric pressure? Again, another question. The atmospheric pressure is very important because it's a very important factor okay because it uh, bring changes in the weather conditions produces weather changes so let uh, the all the elements of weather and climate if you see they are interrelated with each other okay so as the pressure is also related with the other elements so for an example if you see when the temperature changes the it will also bring change in the pressure conditions Okay, and if the pressure condition is changing, then it will definitely affect the winds also. Okay, the horizontal movement of air which is generated, the winds are generated by the change in the pressure system or change in the pressure conditions. Okay, so the pressure, so the, uh, you know, when the pressure is altering or pressure when it is changing the winds, it will also have a further impact on the heat or the coldness of a particular place as well as the moisture content also because the uh, advection is also a force or the winds is also a force you know which brings the hotness and coldness from one place to another as well as the moisture content air is also transferred from one place to another because of the winds okay so as you can see over here all the elements of weather and climate are interrelated with each other so if the atmospheric pressure is changing it will definitely have an impact on the winds as well as the uh, heat or the moisture content of the place also okay now let us discuss the different factors which affects the atmospheric pressure now atmospheric pressure the first factor which we are going to discuss is the temperature 
Now, temperature and pressure are inversely related to each other. It means when the temperature increases, the pressure will decrease or pressure will drop. And when the pressure drops, okay, the pressure increases. Okay, so in a very simple term, if we say when the pressure or when the temperature is low, the pressure is high. And when the temperature is high, the pressure is low. Means inversely proportional to each other, inversely related to each other. Now, why it happens? That's the question again. Okay, so here when there is a direct rays also we can say or where the temperature is very high the molecules of the matter which is present in the atmosphere okay get uh, you know heated up and when it gets heated up it start expanding okay more amount of space will be created there so when it starts expanding the air will become light and when the air becomes light it will start rising upward and whenever there is a rising air okay always remember the pressure condition will be low so it will if the molecules if the temperature is high the molecules are expanding then definitely the pressure in that area will be a low pressure next we have is the you know the temperature when it drops or when the temperature decreases so when the temperature decreases the molecules again they get compact with each other they come close to each other so when they come close to each other they become heavy and when it becomes heavy the air will always sink isn't it like whenever it is light like when we inflate the balloon isn't it when we pump the balloon the balloon you know will expand and it will become light and it will start rising upward isn't it? but the thing is that when we uh, you know pull out the air from the balloon isn't it it no more can suspend in the air or you know rise in the air it will drop so why it what is happening over there the contraction is happening about among the molecules so when the molecules compact with each other it becomes heavy and it will drop and whenever there is you know whenever the air sinks or drops to the earth surface there is always a higher pressure so in this way the temperature and atmospheric pressure is related with each other so the next is the uh, the factor altitude so it's also an important factor so when the altitude you know when the when we uh, ascend in height the pressure will always decrease now why it happens again the density of the air now if you are at the base of a mountain okay if you are standing at the base of the mountain or at a sea level always the pressure will be very high in that area but when we go up in the higher altitude, the pressure will decrease. Because if you see here, when in this image, if you see the column of air which is exerting when you at the base, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 column of air will be exerting pressure on the earth's surface. But if you climb up, when you reach this place, now here only 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 columns of air is pressurizing you. That means the density of the air is decreasing. More up you go, okay, more up you go. The density will decrease more and hence it will also decrease the pressure in that particular area so whenever there is an increasing altitude the pressure is decreasing the next uh, important uh, factor which affects the atmospheric pressure is the water vapor so here students in the water vapor also inversely related again the air which contains high amount of water vapor okay will always have a low pressure and the water vapor contained if it is low in the air then it will also have a higher pressure so it is also inversely related okay so why it happens is because the meteorologist after studying okay what they have found is the density of the water vapor is 40 percent less than the density of the gases okay so if the air is more humid or the more water content water vapor content then it is a low pressure area and in case if more amount of in you know, sorry less amount of water vapor it is present then you know there the density of the gases is more means the dry air will be more exerting pressure compared to the humid air okay so because why it happens because the density of the water vapor is less than the density of the gases okay 
so the next uh, factor is the rotation of the earth so when the earth rotates okay when the earth rotates like a force is generated what we call them it as a centrifugal force now centrifugal force have always a tendency to throw out the air from its place okay so because of the centrifugal force only the Coriolis force is also has been generated if you remember isn't it? so that Coriolis force means like the deflection of the wind in the right and left in the southern uh, hemisphere and northern hemisphere respectively okay so here the centrifugal force because of the shape of the earth the size of the earth the equator at the equator the centrifugal force is maximum okay so there the air which is thrown out is also maximum so when the air is thrown out from that particular place so that means the density of the air is decreasing the weight of that place or the weight of the air in that area is decreasing so whenever it decreases okay the density or the weight of the air decreases it will also decrease the pressure so if more amount of air is thrown out okay low pressure will exist in that area for example in zero degree we have a low pressure because there the centrifugal force is throwing out maximum amount of uh, air from that place and whereas in the polar areas the centrifugal force is nil okay so because of that there no deflection of the air takes place as a result there is the um, higher pressure system okay the last one is the gravitational pool Okay. Now, gravitational force or it is also generated because of the rotational movement of the earth. Okay. Now, the, uh, you know, the law of force, if you see, then it states that uh, more the distance, less the gravitational pull. Okay. Uh, less the distance, more gravitational force or the gravitational pull. Now, if you uh, see the earth shape is not a completely uh, sphere, okay, spherical in shape. Okay, it is little flat at the poles and it bulges at the equator, isn't it? That we call as a geoid shape. So here, if you see the diameter of the polar and the equatorial uh, diameter, okay, there is a slight difference in it. The equatorial diameter is around 12,757 kilometer and the polar diameter is around uh, 12,714 kilometer so if you see the poles are much near to the center of the earth now being spherical the gravitational force of all the uh, you know all over the earth's surface falls under the one point that is the center of the earth okay so here the polar areas if you see the distance is much uh, less compared to the uh, equatorial distance and then, so as a result here the gravitational force at the polar area is more so because of that the high pressure exists over here and at the equator the distance is quite uh, longer compared to the polar areas so here what happened is the gravitational force is less so less gravitational force means the less gravitational force means there is the low pressure in that area okay so the equator experience the low pressure and the polar area experience the high pressure so this is because of the gravitational force okay students so this was a brief introduction to the atmospheric pressure the importance as well as the factors affecting the atmospheric pressure i hope i was able to uh, clear the topic or make you understand and uh, thank you for watching